Last night I was doing my usual bedtime routine, which is responding to Discord DMs for about one to two hours, going through all those. I do that almost every single night. And uh, we had a very interesting one last night that I wanna go ahead and talk about here today. Usually people ask me, you know, general questions about, you know, how to look into this ratio, what to look for in this kind of stock, that kind of stock, or they try to like bring, you know, stocks to my attention. Hey, I just looked into blah, blah, blah stock. Here's why I'm bullish, you know, look into it. Or the last group's usually like if somebody does a crazy move, which is, you know, a definitely a very aggressive move, which we're going to talk about in this video, they'll bring that to my attention. They want my two cents on it. And last night, somebody messaged me. It was a very long, elaborate message, one of the students in there. And basically, they short sold $90,000 worth Amazon stock. They wanted my two cents on this. And that's what I'm going to give you in this video, okay? They shorted it about two or three weeks ago uh, when the stock price was around $2,400, okay? So well, we'll look at the stock price in just a moment. And just so you know, I think we need this context. It's not like 90K is their life savings, okay? They got about 1.7 million in their stock market accounts. I have no clue like what, what they have outside of stock market accounts, but still, this is a pretty significant move, right? This is over 5% of their portfolio and to short sell a stock like Amazon, right? The, the one that is probably benefiting quite a bit right now. This is a very, very aggressive move. And essentially they're, you know, second guessing themselves, especially since Amazon went down huge on earnings and now the stock has bounced back, bounced back. They're, they're having some, you know, second thoughts. And here today, Amazon stock is up again. And now, now they're actually down on that short selling position. They're actually down because they, they shorted it right around 2400. It's 2418 now. So they're down just, you know, slightly on it. And I can understand why somebody would be worried about this. It's, it's Amazon stock. And it was just under $2,300. They report earnings. You know, the stock was over, you know, it was like $2,480 or something like that. They report earnings. It goes down like $150, $200 a share. It's trading in the 2200 range at next day. And, you know, obviously it's bounced back, bounced back, bounced back. It's now at 2418. And, uh, you know, I think everybody watching this video should know Amazon, regardless if you know about short selling stocks or much about stocks, like it's Amazon, okay? That's their massive business. They also have Amazon Web Services, which is their massive cloud business. They own Whole Foods, Zappos, and a ton of other businesses, okay? So here, I'm gonna give you my two cents on this subject. We'll fully go through this. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's make sure we break the record from the last video. We got 3,197 thumbs up. I think we can break that pretty easily on this video, okay? So I wanna go ahead and go through the positive short thesis first. So, so why would it make sense to short a stock like this? You have to kinda, you know, whenever you're thinking about whether you're going long a stock or short a stock, you should basically break it down into thinking, okay, what are the positives with this? What is the good outcome? Why is this realistic? And what what could potentially go wrong here? So we'll go through the positive short thesis first, and then we're going to go through the negative short thesis on why it might not, you know, make sense to short this. And then I'll tell you, in my opinion, which outweighs the other. Is it the positive short thesis or is it the negative short thesis? And I'll even share with you guys at the end if I think there's a more interesting stock to potentially short sell out there than something like Amazon. Okay, so let's start getting into this. So first off, the Nasdaq here today is trading well over 9,000 now, 9,230 points. Another, another one, another update for the markets. It is unbelievable how resilient this stock market is right now, and specifically the NASDAQ. And why, why is the NASDAQ relevant to Amazon? Well, Amazon is listed on the NASDAQ, and Amazon is one of the biggest components. Amazon stock is literally one of the biggest components of the NASDAQ, okay? So great day for the NASDAQ. And look at this now, the NASDAQ is up year to date. It's up 2.88% in the past one year. Think about how much worse everything has gotten in the past one year, right? The NASDAQ is up almost 21% in the past 12 months. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable, okay? So if you're thinking about the first reason why it might be interesting to potentially short a stock like Amazon, that's the biggest weight, it's just looking at this market and being like, hey man, Everything's gotten way worse in the world economic wise. Company earnings pretty much across the board are much weaker than they should have been. And, and you know, who knows how long this could play out for? Maybe it's a year, maybe it's two years, maybe it's three years, maybe it's five years. We don't really know, right? But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's somewhat hard to justify the stock market or the NASDAQ specifically being up almost 21% in the past 12 months. So I could understand coming from that angle and the fact that Amazon's a huge component there. Next angle you could come with if you're thinking about short selling Amazon stock is the valuation on Amazon stock, okay? 
Amazon's trading at a trailing PE of 113. 113, the market usually trades in the 20 range, okay? 113 is rich, and by the way, even when the market's trading at 20 plus, that's a little rich, okay? Usually the market, in my opinion, should be trading in the 15 to 18 range, but you know, that's a subject for another day. Forward PE-wise for Amazon, Amazon's trading at a 96 forward PE, extremely rich, right? And it's trading at a price to sales ratio of over four. Now it's not just that though all those numbers are rich against the market, and we're talking extremely rich against the market, it's also look at it compared to its past, right? We know Amazon, although it is a, still a, a company that definitely grows, we know the best days in, in terms of Amazon's huge growth numbers as a percent are, are in the behind of Amazon. A company will continue to grow, but you know it won't grow like it used to grow, right? Anytime in recent quarters, it's trading at the highest numbers. It's trading at the highest trailing P. It's trading at the highest forward P in any time recently, right? And it's trading at the highest price to sales ratio at any moment in recent history, a 4. 06 and it's always been in the threes, right? So valuation wise, I can definitely understand somebody looking at Amazon and saying, you know, this is interesting as a potential shorting of a stock or potentially buying put options on this. I can definitely understand this. And the third main component is the fact that less than two weeks ago, Jeff Bezos told shareholders, take a back seat for now. Take a back seat for now, okay? We got other things going on out there that we have to manage through and we're gonna have to go, go through and, and you know don't worry so much about profitability here in the short term or anything like that just take a back seat so let's recap the short thesis nasdaq's up over 20 percent in the past 12 months okay i can understand you know somebody thinking you know maybe the market's gotten a little a little stretched uh, the you know amazon has a crazy rich valuation if you compare them to the market or if you even compare the stock against itself in, in, in you know recent quarters right and you have Jeff Bezos basically telling shareholders, take a back seat, guys. Don't worry about stuff for, for a little while. We got, we got other things to worry about, okay? So I, I can understand somebody wanting to short the stock, okay? Now, the anti-short thesis. Why should you not even think about shorting Amazon stock? Well, there's a few things, okay? The recession is going to make a lot of the physical retail players go under. We know a huge component of Amazon's business model is e-commerce, right? And the more and the less and less competition they have, the more and more business Amazon gets. So as these physical retailers continue to go under and go under, people still got to shop, people still got to buy stuff. So where do they end up going? They end up going to Amazing Zon. So if you look at, you know, does a recession hurt or help Amazon? You could actually make an argument that a big recession where, you know, a lot of physical retailers go under, it could actually benefit Amazon in a major way, okay? Second piece of the anti-short thesis around Amazon stock is the fact that Amazon and Alibaba are the kings of e-commerce and it's not even close, right? If, if you think about it, you know, Baba is the main player in China and in many other parts of Asia, as well as the middle East and that's where Alibaba dominates and then if you think about uh, the more developed world you know you think about you know North America you think about Europe and whatnot who is the dominant player in those markets it's Amazon and everybody else is so far behind it's not even funny right if you compare those companies e-commerce numbers and the markets they're in versus all the other players it's just a joke. They just completely dominate. So it's it's hard to short sell a stock that is so dominant in such a massive industry like e-commerce, right? And so this, this is one of those things where you look at it and you're like, do I really want to short Amazon stock when, when this is the dominant company in e-commerce and, and, and they don't even have any threats out there? I mean, who's the biggest threat? Walmart? Walmart the, Walmart should have been on this stuff over a decade ago if they wanted to seriously compete with, with Amazon when it came to e-commerce. So there's just nobody that is a serious threat you know, to, to both those companies. They completely dominate, okay? Another piece of the anti-short thesis for Amazon stock is Amazon always trades rich. If you're talking about valuation and short selling Amazon stock or buying put options on Amazon stock or anything across the board, it's really hard to do because this stock always trades rich. It's not like this has just happened. It's not like it's just all of a sudden, whoa, magically, like Amazon's now all of a sudden an expensive stock. Absolutely not, okay? It's like an oxymoron to say Amazon stock's overvalued because you could make that argument anytime. Right now, the stock's trading at about 113 P ratio, right? Go back to 2018, it was trading at 182. Go back to 2017, it was trading at 190. 
Go back to 2015, it was trading at a 545 P ratio, a 741 P ratio. Do you think this stock is just like started trading rich? It's always trades rich, okay? Go back to 2014 when it's trading at an 854 P ratio. Go back to 2013 when it's trading at a 1,116 P ratio. Go back to 2012 when it trades at a 3,633 PE ratio. The fact is Amazon stock has always traded rich and you could have made an argument that Amazon stock was overvalued for the last 25 years. And guess what ended up happening? You would have been wrong for the last 25 years because you could have made that argument anytime. I could have made, I, I mean, I first started looking into Amazon stock, it was like 2010. And when I looked in at that time, I thought this company had an extremely rich valuation. I love their business model. I love what the company was doing. But I looked at the valuation. I'm like, this company's trading extremely rich. I, I, it looks a little overvalued. And guess what? It just goes up and up and up. And, and it's one of those rare stocks out there that people just, you know, investors when I talk about people investors just focus on what the long-term opportunity is and if it's trading at a hundred P ratio a 200 a 300 a 50 it doesn't really matter because people are in this for the long-term gain and they're not in it based upon the fact that Amazon might trade a P ratio that's higher than the market or lower than the market that's just facts around this stock okay next piece of the anti-short thesis around Amazon stock is the fact that they are the dominant player worldwide when it comes to cloud cloud infrastructure with Amazon web services they are the dominant player okay microsoft's trying to come after them but they're way behind okay and then everybody else you know very small players the fact is aws is way in front of all these other guys and it's likely to stay that way amazon is not somebody that gives up leads usually if anything amazon expands their leads versus all the other guys so you know when you look at the worldwide cloud infrastructure market it's hard to see aws just losing that lead and somebody else you know taking them out or something like that. It's just very unrealistic in my opinion. So as cloud continues to build and build and build, AWS will likely keep market share above 30% and likely just grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And that business is very, very profitable for Amazon and will likely get more and more profitable over the next three, five, seven years. So if you're thinking about, you know, that net income line, getting to some very nice numbers over time, mm, yeah, AWS is definitely gonna help push it there, okay? So let's recap the anti-short thesis. One is Rony Rona is pretty much actually helping Amazon. It's one of the few business models that's actually helped during a situation like this, right? Number two, Amazon always trades rich. So if you're talking about valuation, it's almost irrelevant in regards to Amazon. The stock always trades rich. Number three, e-commerce they have a massive lead especially in any parts of the developed world they're they're you know very unlikely to lose that lead cloud massive lead massive market just like e-commerce if you can think about two spaces you would love to lead as a company e-commerce and cloud like does it get any bigger than that like that's just amazing okay so you know at the end of the day personally it's not a stock i could short it's, it, you know, when I just look at the, the you know, why you should short, short this stock versus why you shouldn't short this stock, why you shouldn't short this stock just outweighs and, and I, you know, yeah, it trades rich. Yeah, I can hear an argument that, you know, it could be overvalued and oh my gosh, they have a lot of competition, all those sorts of things and a lot of big competition, right? A lot of big players try to compete with them. But at the end of the day, it's just not a stock I could short. Flat out, okay? No, is there a stock out there that's more tempting to short sell in my personal opinion than something like an Amazon stock? Well, there is a stock, I'm gonna show you here in just a second, but I will say, I probably wouldn't short this one either, okay? I think it's way more tempting to short than Amazon, and I'll explain that in just a moment, but even this stock, I'm like, uh, I, you know, I can't do it. I, ultimately, I can't do it. And it's Shopify, okay? Shopify is almost the face, the poster child of, if you're thinking about this market and, and a possibility of a way overvalued stock, it's Shopify. But it's probably not even a stock I could short, honestly, because it just trades crazy. But look at this, okay? Shopify now has an $84 billion market cap on it. It has a forward, a forward P, not a trailing P, a forward P of 10,000. Yes, you heard me right. 10,000 uh, forward PE. It's like a glitch in the system. Like, is, uh, what? Uh, huh? What? What? Huh? 10,000 forward PE. Okay. A price to sales ratio. You want to talk about another glitch in the system? 
of 47.9. That's gotta be the most ridiculous forward PE and price to sales ratios I've ever seen in the stock market. I mean, that is absolutely incredible. I mean, I don't even know what to say about those numbers. It's just ridiculous, okay? I mean, at the end of the day, I'd say that looks like the ultimate ultimate bubble stock. If you're thinking about, the, hey, let's point out a bubble stock, you can make an argument that many stocks are overvalued, right? Uh, but, you know, Shopify? <sighs> That looks like the ultimate bubble stock, but at the end of the day, it's probably not one I could short. Because sometimes these stocks just get hot and the investor bases around them, they just don't care to sell this stock regardless of what the valuation goes to because they're, they're in it for the long game. And that makes you know shorting some of these stocks extremely hard to do. And the worst part about shorting stock is the, 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 the loss is unlimited. It's unlimited. It's not like you buy a stock and you put your $1 in and the company somehow goes bankrupt, which as long as you're buying a great balance sheet company, that should never happen. But let's assume that happens. You, you can lose your dollar, right? When you short sell a stock, the loss is unlimited. You could lose way more than 100% when you short sell a stock out there. So, you know, uh, for, for those reasons, you know, I, it's very tempting to look at an Amazon and say, let's short this, or look at a Shopify especially and say, let's short this, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it's much easier to say than actually go put your money and go do it because, uh, you know, sometimes these stocks can just keep going up and up and up and absolutely destroy you in your short position. That's why it's almost impossible to be a short seller. That's why I prefer to go long stocks, look for interesting valuation with, uh, with uh, you know, interesting growth propositions rather than try to short because at the end of the day, you know, these markets can just keep going up and you just get burnt and burnt and burnt, guys. So uh, that's my opinion on this. I would love to hear your guys' opinion down there in that comment section. As always, smash the thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.